G'day guys, welcome back. It's acrylic pouring day, yay. Here's my gloves, <laughs> I forgot my gloves. Now before we get started, I thought I'd show you those two um, metallic swipes that I did. Come up here behind so that you can have a little look. Now this one, see it's got the lines on it. That one was the paper towel swipe. So it's all nice and dry now. Hopefully you can pick up the shimmer of the gold. Mm, I don't know, it's a bit difficult, isn't it? But anyway, there's that one. I can't really fit it all in. Is it shining? <laughs> and then the other one, which is very, very similar, but just doesn't have those scrapey lines. That was the swipe from just the plastic sheet. That's it there. All nice and dry, dried beautifully, gorgeous cells. So there we go, that's them. Right, on to today's pour. I thought, what would happen if I only used pastels? Now the thing with pastels is they've all got white in them um, to make them light. So, you know, it started with a dark blue, a dark pink, a dark green, a dark yellow, and then the companies add white to make them lighter. And because they've added white, they've gone from being transparent or semi-transparent down to an opaque. And normally you need your semi-transparents and your opaques to get the rings inside rings for your cells. So we'll see what happens. Um, now the blue I've made myself, it's 300 grams of white, 100 grams of turquoise and 15 grams of um, cerulean blue. That's that one there, nice pale blue. The pink one is just this one, straight from the bottle, pink. And you can see the little dot down the bottom there, it's coloured in, so that means it's opaque. Uh, this one here is called emerald green. I'm a bit <laughs> cautious about the colour because emeralds are really dark green, aren't they? And then there's the yellow, um, which I just put a little tiny bit of... Um, Oh, gee, I made it so long ago. It was one of the light browns, um, and then some, and then some white into that yellow to make it like a Naples yellow. So that's it. Um, we get a mound on a mound. Pretty thick. I think this one still might be a little bit thicker than the others. You had to add some water to it. We got add another little splash. It's a little bit on the thick side. A little bit more water. So I'm going to use the. Um, spot on treadmill silicone for cells and uh, just one big cup look how big it is <laughs> oh, just one big cup so I didn't want to use like a huge canvas and too much paint just in case it didn't work you know and then I've wasted a lot of product so this is a 25 by 30 centimeter um, <clears throat> 10 by 12 inches there we go And show you around the back. I've got the camera on autofocus, so hopefully it'll work nicely. You can see that consistency there. Mound on a mound. And when, when you do that, a little ribbon on top, it stays for like three seconds before it disappears. That's what you want. That's what I want anyway, for nice cells. Right, let's get some oil in these. So I've got 50 grams of pouring medium, which is my usual, 60% um, Elmer's glue wool and 40% water and then I've mixed them one to one uh, with the paint. I start one to one. The green one I had to add more paint and as you saw the yellow one needed more water but the other ones are one to one. Uh, so there's a hundred grams so basically uh, three ounces, three and a half ounces in each. So I'm just going to go with three drops. One drop per ounce. You can use um, any treadmill silicone. You can use dimethicone. Dimethicone has makes slightly different shaped cells. Let me know if you want me to do another pour using dimethicone so that you can see the difference. I haven't used it for a very long time. When I started pouring, um, I used dimethicone until I worked out that the treadmill silicone was much better, but that's what I used to use. I should revisit it though anyway and see what sort of 
um, reactions we can get with the dimethicone. Okay, there we go. Now, because it's a, a big cup and I've only got one cup, I'll probably do, I don't know, three or four layers. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Just going to put a bit in there. It's going to be a little bit difficult to do a little wriggle over the top because it's quite high <laughs> and the paint has to drop a long way down. Now, I've kept the blue and the yellow away from each other because obviously they make green, blue and yellow. And I've already got a green, so I don't want too much green. But I think the pink and the pink and the green look pretty together. All right, here we go. Second layer. I'll probably do three layers actually, maybe. We'll see. I've got the heater on in the studio today. What does it say? 16 degrees with the heater on. I only just turned it on, so hopefully it'll warm up. I've got it set to 23. <laughs> so after I've done this, um, I'll get cleaned up, jump in, jump in the shower. I've got someone coming to look at their puppy that they've bought. They come and do regular visits with their little puppy. And then I'm going to work on my resin project. I think I'll just scrape all that out. Just, uh, should I? Let's, uh, let's see if we can get an extra layer. Why not? Let's see if we can go for four. Yes, I'm working on a, <clears throat> a very exciting resin project. Hopefully you guys will like it once I put it up. It'll be a few days yet. I'm just waiting for something to arrive in the mail before I can finish it. All right, let's scrape this out. This will be our final layer. I'll just scrape everything out. Do you guys like watching the resin or are you just mainly acrylic pourers? Because when I started this YouTube channel, it was just acrylic pouring and then I've sort of done both. I try to do both every week, but I'm sure whether everyone likes the resin or if you just watch the acrylic pouring, be interested to know. I guess there's going to be people that like one or the other and then maybe people that like both, like I do. I like both. I was always really scared to, to try resin. Like I've seen people do it and I thought, oh, that looks really hard and you know, you hear, hear all these horror stories about it you know affecting people and when I started I wasn't very careful with it and you know I did get it on my skin and I got a rash but I'm just careful with it now and I don't <laughs> got used to it got used to dealing with it I should say just being careful it's like any chemical isn't it you just got to be careful put chemicals around the house you've got your bleachers you know, you clean your toilet and your shower and things you just got to be careful with all of those as well and get them on your skin and try not to breathe them in <laughs> all that kind of thing but yeah I've been really enjoying the resin didn't think I would but I am probably because I've been doing acrylic pouring for so long it's nice to have a change if there's anything you want to see me do or try and do in the acrylic pouring let me know <clears throat> so I think I've done pretty much everything I can think of doing over the years so if there's anything you want me to revisit let me know in the comments down below. The only thing I'm not really into are those Dutch pours as they call them, you know, when you blow the paint with a hairdryer. I'm not really into those. Never have been. I don't know. I just, I don't know. <laughs> they don't do anything for me. <clears throat> All right. There we go. Look at that big cup. Wow, it's so pretty. Now, I'm just going to do this because it's much easier than me trying to um, flip the cup over. I'll probably spill it everywhere. I've got my little corner catcher if I need it. It's just a piece of cardboard. Who's at the door? Someone's at the door wanting to come in. I can hear the beads. Who is it? Come on, Holly. Holly wants to come in. All right, here we go. This has been sitting. Now, I'm not sure what's going to happen if we're going to get any cells. I don't know. Maybe we'll just get like little bullets, like little dots without rings inside rings. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Oh my gosh, this is really big. How am I going to do this now? I'm just going to... I'm just going to do that. I don't want to like go through the middle or anything. Oh look, there is a 
cell. Wow. And it's got rings. I'm just going to use this little excess just to wet the corners. I will be tipping that off though because you know how it, it's a bit stripy and I don't want that. So I just want this beautiful, smooth, blended colour which is in the middle. But I'll just use this excess just to wet the corners there so that the paint can run over easily. Oh, someone else scratching at the door now. How many dogs have I got? Actually, my, probably one of my daughters. Oh, now you want to go out, Holly. No, you just wait. I'm busy. Come back. All right, so I think what I'm going to do now, you know what I want to do, what I want to do. Um, let's just go over the one edge first, and then I'll torch. And back again. And the other side. A lot of people comment on how much paint I use, but seriously, and unless you, you know, been trying to do this acrylic pouring with the cells for a, a while, um, you, you won't understand that you actually need so much paint on the surface there to be able to move it around um, without overstretching your your cells. So it is really important. There's no point, you know, making up all your paint. I'm just going to torch it. There's no point making up all your paint. Um, and then you think, oh my gosh, I haven't used enough, I've overstretched everything. And that's a waste, isn't it? Because then you're not happy with it and you probably scrape it and do it again. So then you're using even more paint rather than just using a little bit more to begin with um, and getting a much better result because you've used more paint. That's very pale, isn't it? Very pastel-y. Just torching it very lightly and getting some caterpillars up though. A lot, of, a lot of caterpillars, I don't know why. Probably getting, normally I go around in little circles from quite high up. I was getting a bit close, I think. Um, I'll tilt it and then I might torch again. So some of these areas that have got a lot of cells, they can go. Let's just walk that paint down. I kind of want to get rid of that little triangular thingy down the bottom there. It doesn't all go. Oh yeah, let's get rid of it. Let's get rid of it. And then over here we've got some caterpillars. All right. That sort of it's very greeny blue, isn't it? The pink hasn't really shown very much. Now let me just torch a little bit more. Just in these areas that hasn't got very much and I'm going to go very carefully so that I don't get too close and I get caterpillars again. If you get too close, you heat it up too fast, you do tend to get a lot of caterpillars coming up. Which is a row of cells all joined up together in case you don't know what I'm talking about. What's she talking about? Caterpillars in paintings. Alright, so we've got a few more cells popped up, you can see there. Again, they're yellow. I wish I had more pink. All right, now I'm going to tilt that way. And again, walk left, right, left, right. If you just go straight down, all your, all your cells are just going to go elongated. So you need to try and keep them in a round shape by going left and right at the same time that you're going down. Hopefully I won't lose all my pink. Over. Over. I'll just get rid of that blobby one there. Okay, look at that. Now, this white over here, I want to see if I can get any cells popping up through that little bit of white there. I like how it's a bit pale on that side. I just would like a few cells. I'm really surprised actually that I'm getting cells with um, just the opaque colours. a little bit more to get some smaller cells up through the center of those bigger ones just for a bit of contrast whoops got too close there it's tricky you know you try not to get too close but you do sometimes get a little bit too close even I do 
and a bit close there. All right, so my cells are a little bit overstretched up this end. I'm going to see if I can take the weight of the paint back down a little bit just to kind of shrink those cells down a little bit. I don't know if they will. Try and get that corner off. Yay, I did it, I did it, I did it. Woohoo. <laughs> oh, that's better. Oh, look at the pink opening up. Back again. All right, I'm going to leave it like that. And you can see I've got quite a lot of paint there, but you need to have that excess paint if you want to have a beautiful finished product. Well, it's very green. I guess green's just one of those colours. And like I said, I had the blue and the yellow, which makes green as well. Maybe next time I cut back on the green a bit because I'm going to get green anyway. All right, let's just run that gloved finger underneath. Pop your finger on the corner if you've missed your corners. Sometimes you miss your corners. Just stop that paint from continuing to drip off. Alrighty. Now, take these gloves off. Let's get you down for a close-up. I'm really surprised about the quality of those cells with just opaque paints. Really surprised. Go down and have a closer look, hey? Come around this way, away from the ring light. So we've got a pretty blue background there. It looks like sky, doesn't it, with clouds? And look, we've got those really nice, nice shaped cells. We've got yellow and green cells there with the blue background, which is really pretty. And then up here, we've got some pink. And because I put the blue next to the pink, it's going a little bit purple there, which is what you would expect, which is fine. And into the blues. More greens. So there is a bit of pink there, not as much as I was hoping for. You can see that a lot of them have got the white rings around them. So the white is obviously heavier than the other colours. I'm really happy with that. I was not expecting that at all. I had no idea what was going to happen. All right. Oh, that's me done. That was a pretty quick and easy one, wasn't it? Just a one flip. But um, as you can see, there's no stripes because I didn't do the flip and drag. So there's no stripies. It's just a beautiful, soft, blended background color, which is really pretty. And sometimes I like the stripies, you know, but just you don't get it when you don't do a flip and drag. Just one flip cup and you get that blended background. So if you want that, don't drag. All right. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed that video. Interesting to see that uh, just opaques actually do give cells, but that's the silicone oil. It's magic stuff. It's a bit expensive, but hey, you know, it'll last you years because you're only using a few drops at a time. So invest in a bottle. It's great stuff. All right, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you real soon for the next video. Take care. Bye for now.